What is going on everyone? Welcome to the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. In today's video, we are looking at investing in sealed Pokemon products in 2023. I can't believe it's October already. Things are flying. Pokemon 151 is out. The Pokemon economy is kind of in a bit of a downturn, but people are flocking back for 151 and that's really hard to find. But booster boxes are really cheap and uh, singles are really cheap. So there's like I mean, it's kind of a crazy time in the Pokemon scene. So we're going to dive into what is going on and what I think could be some good pickups for you in the sealed product department. Before we do that, I have a giveaway going on this week. So if you want to be entered to win four packs of Scarlet and Violet 151, what you need to do is subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on, hit the like button, leave a comment. Let's get into this data and see what are some good sealed products for Pokemon in October 2023. Okay, starting out, we talked about it last week in some videos, but man, oh man, the booster boxes for Scarlet and Violet era are absolutely ridiculously cheap. Starting off a Scarlet and Violet base set, booster box down from $99.88. It's currently sitting at $90.19. A couple days ago, it was actually at $89 on TCG Player. So a $90 booster box, what an insane time to get a booster box. Even though it's not the most popular set, like you almost can't go wrong buying a booster box for that cheap, honestly. Same with Paldea Evolved, one of the, the actual sleeper sets. And I've been watching some content and I've always thought this right from the start. Paldea Evolved is one of these sets that I think is a little bit of a sleeper set where it's got some awesome cards. It's got some awesome artwork. It's really cheap right now. And I think that this one is actually quite fun to open. There's lots of really, really cool cards in this set. And I think it could do well over time. It's got that Iono and it's got the Magikarp, the Tyranitar, a uh, couple really cool pieces in this one. And you can currently buy this booster box market price, $95.39. Absolutely unbelievable. And still almost uh, looks like trending downwards a little bit. Next up, we got Obsidian Flames, the third set out of uh, Scarlet and Violet era, and another one that is under $100 for a booster box. This one's actually kind of gone up and down so far. Like it's been out for what, two months now ish, something like that, and currently going for $99.80. This one is one of those ones where I'm actually not sure about because you got the three Charizard cards, the special illustration rare one, the gold one, and the regular ultra rare one. Uh, Charizard always seems to pack a bit of a punch, but then we also have talked about uh, recently that Charizard seems to be overprinted lately. Lots of people are feeling that effect. Like it's just, we've had too much Charizard because uh, we've had it in like Brilliant Stars. We had it a bunch early on in Sword and Shield. Then we had a Radiant Zard in Pokemon Go. We had a Radiant Zard in Crown Zenith. Uh, and now another Charizard here in uh, obsidian flames well a bunch of charizards and it was in celebrations as well charizard has ruled for a long time okay so we have all of these scarlet and violet booster boxes currently going for under a hundred dollars so like in that video where i talked about my investing strategy i'll link it up in the top and in the description but uh buying booster boxes for msrp over time is going to do really well in my opinion you're just gonna continue to dollar cost average in so you're going to continue buying the new set and over time these are going to work out really well you're going to buy the dips you're going to buy the highs and overall it's just all going to average out into you buying at a good time but i also think that Sword and Shield era booster boxes are going to do really, really well as well, starting with kind of the Chilling Rain era. So I, I didn't include Battle Styles, but Battle Styles is okay as well. It's also cheap still, considering how old it is. But Chilling Rain is one of these sets where you have so many amazing cards in it. You got the Blaziken VMAX, which actually I was looking this week, and there's like the population for PSA 10 Blaziken VMAX cards is quite low and it's a really really cool card but then you have the three birds you got the articuno the moltres the uh, zapdos and you have the gold snorlax you got the ice rider and shadow rider calyrex v max cards lots of really cool cards in chilling rain lots of huge bangers and uh you're still buying this booster box at market price which is under msrp msrp is like 143 dollars and 63 cents i believe so if you can still find these booster boxes we're going to go through them fast but chilling rain uh right around msrp mark fusion strike you got some cool cards you got the muse you have the espion v max you got the gengar v max beautiful cards and this one going right around msrp as well then we move into brilliant stars a, another charizard set where you have the rainbow zard you have the charizard altar you have the arceus uh 
some really cool cards here and brilliant stars right around that msrp mark then we go into astral radiance this one's actually on the up and up right now from 120 dollars three months ago to 142 but still at that msrp range you got the machamp you got the dialga you got the uh palkia some really cool cards uh you go into lost origin you have the, one of the biggest cards out of Sword and Shield era, the Giratina. And this one just went through a reprint along with Silver Tempest. But already I'm talking to TCG and Game. Shout out to him. And he doesn't have any Lost Origin for me to buy anymore because it is like flying off the shelves. Same with Silver Tempest. He still has a little bit, but uh, these prices have taken a hit. So because of that reprint, but now is a great time to maybe... Uh, stock up on a few more booster boxes of all of these sets i went through those pretty quick but we're talking about chilling rain fusion strike brilliant stars astral radiance lost origin silver tempest basically the last half of sword and shield era where the booster boxes are still like right around that msrp mark and over time you can get in late almost and i think there's some huge opportunity where people are going to remember the COVID times where they're sitting at their house they got back into pokemon there's alternate arts introduced there's some really cool cards they remember opening and getting back into pokemon during the sword and shield era and i think that's going to be a huge hit like five years down the road maybe even 10 years down the road as pokemon goes through these ups and downs cycles Hey, before we carry on, I just wanted to let you know about my partnership with TCG and games.com. You can go there and get 5% off your next Pokemon order. The guy has awesome stock, uh, great service, great delivery, and you can pre-order lots of stuff as well. So if you want 5% off your next Pokemon order, go to TCG and games.com. Use the promo code, the pokey office, and he's going to treat you really good. Let's get back to the data. Next up, we're talking about a reprint, which is about to happen. The crown Zenith elite trainer box reprint where uh right now the the boost or sorry the elite trainer box 54 dollars and 19 cents uh but i think that you're going to be able to get your hands on some of these like i remember a few months ago we were talking about crown zenith where i can't find it where i live some people in uh in the united states have been saying that they can't get it off the shelves like the shelves are just stocked full of crown zenith the collecting dust so it's really hit and miss but as another reprint or at least a small reprint comes out of crown zenith elite trainer boxes another set it's the very end of the yellow borders the very end of sword and shield era and it has some amazing cards like check this out so many cool cards in crown zenith you got the four gold v star cards giratina arceus palkia dialga you have that beautiful mewtwo v star card you have some of the uh evolutions the Leafeon and the glaceon v star you have the three dogs, the Raikou, the Entai, the Swakoon, uh, some really cool cards. Then you got that uh, secret rare Pikachu. You got the Elisa Sparkle, some really, really cool cards out of Crown Zenith that I think people are going to remember how amazing the pull rates were in Crown Zenith, how much fun they had opening in it. Plus, it has the benefit of those like end of yellow borders in Pokemon English. Plus, it has the benefit of being the last Sword and Shield era set out of it all. So altogether, we've talked about it. Booster boxes in Scarlet and Violet era are dirt cheap right now. They're like all three of them are under $100, which is absolutely insane, especially considering that in Scarlet and Violet era, the MSRP actually went up. Then we look at like the later half of Sword and Shield era where most of the booster boxes, other than Evolving Skies, are all like right around that MSRP or below mark where it might be a really, really valuable time to like... Um, get a couple more booster boxes for your collection or for your investment to hold on to for three to five years as they increase in value as the supply decreases and demand continues to stay the same or maybe even increase over time. Next, we're going to talk about a few other things that I've been looking at. Uh, I've just noticed a huge influx of Japanese booster boxes. People seem to love it. And it's just like going through this new craze of popularity, especially with the 151 in Japanese. You had the reverse hollow master balls, which is so much fun to open. I'm so disappointed they didn't do that in the English. But I even remember like back a few months ago when V-Star Universe came out before Crown Zenith, people were loving opening that set and it's still extremely expensive. But then even into Scarlet and Violet, there's some really cool stuff like uh, Ruler of the Black Flame wasn't all that popular, but you had Clayburst and Snow Hazard, and I can't even remember them all, but some really cool options. And then the last picture on the right here, I have the Raging Surf, the newest Japanese set that just released. And 
people just seem to love opening Japanese cards. There's this new craze in North America about Japanese cards. The quality control is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, sometimes Japanese cards seem to hold higher value. There might be a little bit more of a chase for the big ticket cards. So something to keep your eye on. And if you haven't opened a Japanese booster box uh, and you have the money to do so, I would highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next up, speaking of 151, we're talking about the English 151 because man, oh man, is it juicy, but it's getting really hard to find. So MSRP for the, uh, elite trainer box, $60. I have the Pokemon center one pictured here, uh, for some reason, but you just can't get it. I've looked so many times. They never did a reprint. If you didn't hit it on day one, when they released it on Pokemon center, I don't think you're getting one of these and they're already expensive. Then these booster bundles, uh, they're just almost impossible to find. Uh, luckily one person in the discord server actually, uh, told me that they had just restocked them on Pokemon center and I was able to get my hand on a few more of them, but those were sold out literally within the hour. So it's crazy. People are already pricing it up. TCG and games has told me that the distributors, so not even the local game stores or the online storefronts, the distributor is actually already increasing the price to sell to the storefronts who are, then have to increase the price to us as the consumer, which is just mind blowing because 151 is literally brand new. Uh, but man, oh man, is it fun to open. So if you can get your hands on some of this, first of all, I think 151 is going to age super well because I already am seeing it in the community and on YouTube and on Facebook, people are coming back and flocking back to Pokemon to collect them all, the original 151. So that's really exciting. So it's bringing this new influx of collectors and hobby enthusiasts back into Pokemon. Um, but also at the same time, I think that if we can learn anything from Crown Zenith or lots of the specialty sets, Pokemon is going to continue to reprint this. Like, remember how long you could find celebrations on Walmart shelves? Uh, or Shining Fates where you still find it sometimes. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of 151 to go around, especially considering how popular it is. So I would highly recommend not FOMOing out, but when you find some, if you are willing to either hold it or open it, 151 is a great option. Coming out in like a couple weeks, uh, it's not long now, the 151 Ultra Premium Collection, another great option. And I think there's actually some available so I don't think this is going to be like the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection where there was none and then the, the price just skyrocketed. But I don't think it's going to be like the Charizard UPC because I think Pokemon recognized how much of a failure that was with overprinting it to the moon. I mean, people and stores have still just been trying to fire sale the Charizard UPC because they were so readily available and people FOMO'd and paid way too much for them. But this 151... Uh, it's going to be exciting. 16 booster packs in there. You got the Mew EX metal card. Then you have two uh, illustration rare cards. You got the Mew EX illustra special illustration rare, which looks gorgeous. It's one of my favorite cards out of the Japanese set. Plus you have the Mewtwo illustration rare promo card, which is another really, really cool card. So really looking forward to diving into this ultra premium collection when it comes out. And if you can get your cop hands on a copy of one of these might be a really good option. I got one more spicy take for you. And we've already talked about all the other booster boxes. So why not include Evolving Skies? If you can afford to get your hands on one of these things, I think that Evolving Skies is going to the moon. I don't think you've missed the opportunity yet. If you look back at like Team Up, uh, Ultra Prism, Unified Minds, Cosmic Eclipse, the later booster boxes out of the Sun and Moon era, they were kind of mid-range for quite a while and all of a sudden, boom, and now they're all like $500 plus. Team Up is an insane amount. I don't even want to tell you how much a Team Up booster box is, uh, but all of them going crazy. Evolving Skies has been reprinted so much, uh, and even though some of the cards are on a little bit of a downturn right now, they have maintained huge value for a long time already. Evolving Skies is going places. It's my number one pick for the long-term hold out of the Sword and Shield era. Uh, with that being said, let me know what you think, and I'm going to flip the screen around. We're going to open up some Astral Radiance, chasing after that Machamp alt art. Okay, so let me know what you think. Um, it just is crazy to me what's happening in Pokemon. Like, literally, there's people coming in for 151. 
Uh, lots of these booster boxes are dirt cheap. Evolving Skies continues to climb. Japanese boxes are getting really popular and really expensive to get into Canada and the United States. Um, so there's just a lot going on and I'm really excited for the 151 stuff. Still, as of the recording of this, I'm waiting for my shipment, which is really sad because it was supposed to be here and then it got delayed. So it is what it is. So don't have a ton to open up right now, but we're going to open up some Astral Radiance and see if we can find that Machamp alt art because definitely one of the chase cards that I haven't pulled yet out of uh, Sword and Shield era and one that I think has a lot to offer. I think it's really, really a cool card. So let's get to it. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think about uh, the way the Pokemon economy is happening right now. Like, it seems like there's some people leaving, but then there's lots of people coming back. Like, lots of the comments in my recent videos are seem to say that they're new and that they're coming back to collect them all, which is really, really fun. Or, like, I've heard from some people who are... Oh, yeah, I was... Uh, not into Pokemon, but then my kid got into it, or I got into it with my kid, and now we're having a blast opening packs together. I mean, that is what it's all about, baby. That sounds so amazing. Not that I have kids yet, but uh, definitely it seems pretty awesome. There's a Radiant Heatran, and I think I got something in the back. Do. It's a regular art. 3, 2, 1. Dialga V. Would have been nice if that was an alternate art, but uh, not too bad. A little double banger pack action. Um, so, yeah, the Pokemon space is just interesting. And yet, at the same time, like, I've talked about it in quite a few videos lately, but I think that... Oh, bad code card. I think that uh, the Pokemon scene is going to age well, because people just are going to remember the Sword and Shield era. I think the Sword and Shield era has so much to offer. Alternate arts, the last yellow borders, uh, amazing artwork, Gardevoir... Okay, so we got something even on the bad border packs. Not too shabby. Um, so much to offer. Uh, I It's when I got back into Pokemon. So I think I'm like a lot of people. Like Lots of people got back during the Sword and Shield era. Collecting seemed to like just really take off. Like I originally started collecting Funko Pops before getting back into the Pokemon card scene. Then I started opening a couple Pokemon cards. Got some good cards out which was super, super fun. And then the world is my oyster. That's that's what happened. Radiant Grey Ninja. This is actually still a really nice card uh, that people use in their decks for the game quite often. So not bad. Not bad. Gotten a lot of the uh, second last slot hits so far today and not a lot of the other ones. There's also... The Starmie in this set, which is absolutely spectacular. Regigigas, and we got another something full of hits tonight. Uh, Regigigas and a Machamp. Oh man, we are hitting all of the V's, but not the uh, not the alternate arts. I don't think I've ever actually pulled that card. The artwork is pretty cool on it. I'm gonna be honest, but it's kind of funny where you're opening Pokemon packs, and like for me. Personally, I love the chase of it. So I kind of like when pull rates are a little bit harder because it just means that uh, when you actually hit something, it really, really feels amazing. Then um, the the value goes up too, which is kind of nice. We got another something. My goodness. Three, two, one. Adaman. Rainbow. Boom. Dang, I'm on fire right now. I am on fire. So it's crazy opening Sword and Shield packs, hitting tons of hits, because the pull rates, like it's not like they're bad, but it's hard to, but I kind of like it. So that's another reason why I like, especially some of the older sets, like, um, Fusion Strike, Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies. When you get a big hit out of those packs, like it's like, I worked for this. Or if you didn't work and got lucky, then it feels really good. It's like you hit a uh, jackpot. The Bonitis, as we like to say on the Poke Office. 
Uh, man, I need to get a meme made of that for all you regular watchers and who've joined me on my live streams. So one of these days we'll get to it. Two packs left. Um, thank you for watching. My channel has been experiencing crazy huge growth over the last couple weeks here, which is really amazing. Kind of blows my mind actually. So thank you all for your support. Yeah, like I don't take it lightly. Don't take it for granted at all. It's amazing. Not on that pack. So we're on to the last pack. Come on, baby. Last pack magic. Last pack magic. One time. Here we go. All right. Come on. Will fish. Okay. Silver. It's either a full art or an alternate art. I'm a little nervous. We're going to do it in three, two, one. Sneasler V. Not an alt art. My heart was pumping. Oh. So many of the silver borders lately with no dice. It's still a really nice hit, let's be honest. And I got a lot of hits today. Holy cow. All right, we got the full art, Hisui and Sneasler V, a really nice hit. The Rainbow Adaman, Machamp V, the Gardevoir, Radiant Green Ninja, Origin Form Dialga V, and a Radiant Heatran. That's going to do it for me at the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. Thank you again so much for watching. If you want to be entered to win four packs of 151, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until my next video, peace!